All right, guys, I got to tell you, I spend a whole lot of time looking at woke stuff every single day. And uh, I, I must tell you, this story right here um, is a new one, right? It was a new one. It, it seems like uh, these woke revolutionaries come up with new stuff all the time. They are trying to outwoke each other or so it seems. As this professor says that the grading system is racist, right? The grading system is racist and proposes labor-based system white language supremacy <laughs> so basically label based grading would weigh papers based on how much labor students put into their assignments right so it's not about right or wrong anymore apparently right it's not about whether or not you actually got the question right it's not about two plus two equals four um two plus two can equal five and you can still get just as much credit as long as you put in <laughs> the labor right you put in a lot of labor even if you're an idiot Against, that's my takeaway from this now we're gonna read here guys and i gotta tell you up front uh i read this and i honestly don't know what the hell this professor is trying to say i don't know what he's really talking about so i'm gonna try my best to get through it but i'm gonna tell you man i th this woke language is beyond me it's beyond me or it could be because it's late right maybe that could be it but i'm just saying i had a hard time really figuring out what the, what this man was talking about but let, let let's get into it a professor at Arizona State University is calling for the end to white supremacy language <laughs> and to do away with common way of grading papers in favor of labor-based grading that will redistribute power. Quote, white language supremacy in writing classrooms is due to the uneven and diverse linguistic legacies that everyone inherits and uh, racialized white discourses that are used as standards which gives privilege to those students who embody those habits of white language already. Asao Onu, a professor of rhetoric and composition at Arizona State University, said during online discussion last Thursday, the College Fix reported. All right, so a couple things here. He says, white language supremacy in writing classes is due to the uneven and diverse linguistic legacies that everyone inherits. I guess what he's saying is that if you're not, I guess, born into a certain culture i guess he would define a white culture then therefore you're at a, a disadvantage right it, it, i guess if english isn't your main language i don't know honestly i really don't okay um but i guess he, he's he's saying that the english language in and of itself is 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 white supremacy i i guess that's the interpretation and um if you embody that language already then you're going to be at an advantage over those who who don't Right. And, and I guess that maybe would apply to even those uh, that are not necessarily from a different country, but maybe were born in America, but um, have some type of, you know, like local dialect or something like that. Right. In which you don't necessarily use um, proper grammar all the time. Like I, I don't because I'm from the South. I admittedly uh, don't use proper grammar all the time like I should. But I guess I don't know. I guess that's what he's saying. But I think the thing is, is that the English language uh, evolves over time, right? They're updating the English language all the time because so many people from around the world interact with the English language. And because language evolves over time, naturally, anyways, I'm not necessarily sure how necessary this is, right? Speaking of necessity, I'm not even sure how necessary <laughs> this guy's job is, okay? Professor of Rhetoric and Composition at Arizona State University, again, sounds to me like one of those positions uh, that should not be subsidized by taxpayer dollars. I'm sorry, right? I'm sorry. I just don't think that these type of professors, I don't think we should be paying for this stuff. I really don't. I really don't. Because I just feel like the value that they add back to society is very minimal. I really do feel that way about a lot of these um, professors in these like liberal arts fields. I really do. Okay, and the more I read this, the more I'm sure of how I feel. Inohu added that white supremacy culture makes up the culture and normal practices of our classrooms and disciplines to combat, to combat the issues. Inohu suggests implementing labor-based grading, which redistributes powers in ways that allow for more diverse habits of language to circulate. He has also coined the phrase habits of white language used to describe the common way teachers and professors grade papers. OK, so again, this to me sounds like it would apply to like English classes or classes that are very writing in communication 
intensive. Because to me, I'm thinking like for a math class, again, two plus two equals four, right? I don't care how much labor you put into it. It's either right or it's wrong, right? It's either right or it's wrong. And we, we cannot get to a point where we are not grading based off objective reality, right? I think that's a dangerous path. So I would want to know exactly what this would apply to. I can, I feel like there's some fields like biology, you know, like hard sciences and math and things like that, physics, engineering, like it doesn't matter how much effort you put in. If, if you're wrong, you're just wrong, right? You're just wrong. Now I can see something like this being applied for, you know, English or something like that, or some more communicated communication intensive course, but I don't know. Labor-based grading would mean weighing assignments based on how much labor students put into their work and not assigning grades based off grammar or quality of work. <laughs> Wait, so if I write a research paper, right, and my research paper uh, has nothing to do with the actual topic, I don't make an actual argument or anything like that, but I put a lot of effort into it, right? I put a lot of effort into it. Uh, does that mean I'm supposed to get an A? right am i supposed to get an a simply because i put a lot of effort to it i'm not sure if i if i agree with this i'm not i don't think i agree with this at all label-based grading structurally changes everyone's relationships to dominant standards of english that come from elite masculine heteronormative ableist white racial groups of speakers and Noah said in the presentation the college fix reported a noah's talk came during a 70 minute event hosted by the rhetoric writing and linguistics speaker series Sponsored by the Department of English at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, the discussion was aimed at professors, but was also open to students, alumni, and others. Anoa told Fox News later on Tuesday that the labor-based grading ecologies are fundamentally about creating compassion, democratic conditions, ones that are critical and rigorous, but if by rigorous we mean deep, thoughtful <laughs> engagement with each other for each other's sake and not for grades or false external motivators that ultimately erode a student's ability to learn and take risks. Quote, these new conditions can provide a wider group of students who come from a more diverse set of background, language backgrounds to thrive and learn. This is important to do if we are to inquire about the politics of English language in our world that end up creating situations of misunderstanding and harm. He <laughs> continue. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Like I told you guys, I have no idea what this man is trying to say, right? I have no idea what I just read whatsoever. So let's, let's read a little bit more here. He also pointed out to Fox news that he is not calling for classrooms that do not have grammar and language instruction. Quote, I'm what I'm arguing for are safe classrooms that offer better, clear ways to understand what it means to learn dominant forms of English in our world today. So I'm not arguing uh, we get rid of grammar and language instruction, nor even that we don't pay close attention to what I call the habits of white language. I am arguing that we create better conditions in classrooms for all students, no matter their language backgrounds. He told Fox News in an email. Bro, I still do not understand. Like, what do you want, bro? Okay, if it's if it's labor based, that means you're you're grading people based off the effort that they're putting in. That means you're not grading the quality of their work. Um, when you're trying to learn, I guess, the English language or whatever, right? I mean, there is like standard grammar. Like I understand that there is some differentiations and stuff like that, but I, I don't think that we should try to stray too far away from that, right? I think that uh, we should try to teach proper English. Now, I don't think we should judge people too harshly, you know, if they don't necessarily speak proper English, but I think writing proper english and using proper grammar when writing is important right i think that's very 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 important and i don't think that's something that um we should be trying to uh play loosey-goosey with okay to a certain extent right but to me it, it this to me sounds like dumbing down of of academics right that, that's what it sounds like and see the problem with this type of stuff is that this trickles down into K through 12, right? It starts with a woke academic that has, you know, a, a idea and says, hey, you know what? <clears throat> we should just get rid of uh, grading, right? And just make it purely based off lab, lab, uh, labor, right? The more effort you put in, the better your grades. This is going to pick up in some woke high school that's like, oh, that's a great idea, right? This way, black students can perform the same level as white students do, right? Instead of actually being, you know, just as good and, and, and learning, 
we're just going to make it so they don't have to learn as long as they're putting in the effort, right? doesn't matter if they actually learn the subject. Uh, they'll apply that type of stuff. And then next thing you know, <laughs> we're going to be producing doctors who just worked hard but don't really know anything about <laughs> medicine. That's what it leads to, right? Like you, you can't apply this stuff to certain fields. You just can't. I don't even think you should apply it to English. Again, this to me just sounds like a, a, a reason to dumb down our education system and not live in objective reality, right? Right is right. Wrong is wrong. And we know that the woke revolutionaries would do this because they try to tell us that men can have uh, babies, right? Men can have periods, right? So we know they will do that. So this might be a, a, just another attempt at that. Or it could be that, oh, you know, well, we're just trying to take power away from you know, white people because, you know, they know English better than everybody else, right? They can learn English better than everybody else. So we just need to stop uh, using proper English, period, <laughs> right? These people kill me, bro, with an obsession with white folks. I don't get it. I really don't. The ASU professor also had participants pause during the talk to exercise an important anti-racist practice of examining how they participate in racism or anti-racism. Pausing in our work helps us intervene and disrupt by first noticing ourselves participating in racism, engaging in white fragility and white rage or white language supremacy. <laughs> Bro, this is comedy, man. Inuo, along with his wife, recently established an anti-racist teaching endowment. Earlier this year, it aims to fund an anti-racist teaching conference for secondary and post-secondary teachers, support a summer workshop or institute for a smaller group of teachers to learn about and research anti-racist teaching approaches, and establish several scholarships for students who wish to focus on anti-racist approaches to teaching in a variety of disciplines. All right, yeah, so it's a grip. <laughs> it's a grip. Okay, he wants to establish a teaching conference for secondary and post-secondary teachers. Didn't I tell you? that this would trickle down into uh, K-12, through right? I told you that's what it would do, right? It would trickle down. This man sets up a whole endowment where he's trying to get a whole lot of that woke money, right, and then take that money and push this on teachers and, you know, secondary school, right? And that trickles down again into K-12. through And then now, lo and behold, you got, uh, a, a school district now changing their grading systems to say, you know what, hey, you get graded based on how much effort you put in, <laughs> right? And again, for the life of me, I really don't understand how do you grade effort, right? How do you know how much effort somebody put in, right? If you send two students home with, you know, a, a, an assignment, right? Um, one student can put in a whole lot of work and still basically get it wrong, and another student can, you know not put in that much work and get it right is the student that didn't put in that much work supposed to suffer because they didn't put in that much work right i mean that, that doesn't make sense that doesn't make sense whatsoever also on top of that just generally speaking um the more effort that you put in the better your grade is going to be right if you put in the effort then you're probably going to get better grades now if you put in a whole lot of effort and you work hard and you just simply aren't good at a certain subject you can't get good grades that just means you're not good at it that means that hey you probably shouldn't be going into that field that's the way that it's supposed to work so effort is already built into our grading system right we don't have to change objective reality we don't have to make uh two plus two equal five in order to actually grade people on effort okay because generally speaking those students with the best grades are going to tend to put in more effort now there's some students that again naturally smarter they got you know they're, they're more gifted so they don't have to put in as much work but i'm just saying in general the more work and effort that you put in the better grades that you're going to get but for whatever reason this guy he, he wants to change that up and i wouldn't be surprised again if i'm covering another story like this you know down the road in which there's some k-12 through school that's saying hey we need to start grading students based off how much effort they put into their work again crazy lunatic psycho stuff man it, it, it's, it's absolutely insane. But this is how it starts. It starts with some woke academic, academic that comes up with an idea like this. And then next thing you know, it's in K through 12. But let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.